Welcome to Spirits Podcast, a boozy tour through mythology, legends, and folklore. Every week we pour a drink and learn about a new story from around the world. I'm Amanda. And I'm Julia. And this is episode 79, Joshen Shuani. Yep, we went back to China for some good, good mythology this time around, and I'm really excited about how it turned out. Me too. I'm also excited about those who just joined us on Patreon, patreon.com slash spirits podcast, which is the place that you can become a member of the spirits community and get awesome behind the scenes, extras, recipe cards, bloopers, cut audio, all kinds of great stuff. So welcome and thank you to Marella, Ramon, David, BRG, Rach, Grace, and a tiny dino what a, a tiny cute dino. dino so good <laughs> thank you as always as well to our supporting producer level patrons whose support sustains us neil philip julie christina josh eeyore jessica maria cammy ryan phil fresh and deborah as well as our legend level patrons mercedes ashley buggy rachel sandra ashley marie leanne and cassie uh yes you sustain us like like nutrients and and good good water on a battlefield it's true. It'll be relevant. Just wait. It always is. I love how it took me like 40 episodes to realize that you made that relevant every time. I do my best. <laughs> it's not always good, but I do my best. <laughs> Julia, what were we drinking during this episode? Well, Amanda, because it is nearly summertime and because our uh, goddess for this episode is also known as the Dark Lady, I decided to make us some uh, charcoal infused hard lemonades. I was very suspicious. Mm -hmm. People will find the recipe online, though, if they get their show notes. It was very good. I was happy with it. I thought it turned out pretty dang good. Well, before we get into the episode, we wanted to give a couple shout outs. One to Tila, who is a fan of the show, and we are a fan of her. Just wanted to say hello, Tila. What's up? And then we also are going to give a shout out to a new show. Uh, this is the Noir and Bazaar. It is an original podcast coming out of WYPR, which is Baltimore's NPR station. And the host, Katie Marquette, examines weird and creepy history, surreal film and fiction, and strange folklore. So you can tell it is really up our episode, and we actually got a sneak peek of the episode dropping tomorrow, as of the day this episode comes out, uh, where they discover the many myths and personifications of death. So um, super my favorite subject. Mm -hmm. So death can be an old washerwoman, can be an angel of doom, can be a shrieking lady in the wind. Sounds like a banshee. That's my jam. It absolutely is my jam as well. And we think that you would really enjoy it as well, listeners. So you can find this episode and all of the other ones at W Y ypr.org slash podcast central or search for the noir and the bazaar wherever you get your podcasts do it up it is definitely going to be up our listeners alley and we're going to include a link in the description as well that about does it i think mm -hmm. so without further ado enjoy spirits podcast episode 79 joshen shun When it comes to direct to English translations of names, normally we have some like pretty cool names with some pretty cool translations, right? Oh yeah, for sure. For example, Persephone's name can be translated as because she is wise and touches that which is in motion. I mean, word, like, I don't know, the season. <laughs> yep, yeah, checks out. Thank the you, Earth. Greek. Uh, Sekhmet has these cool titles like the one before whom evil trembles and she who mauls. Same. Yeah. But I think that Joshen Shueni is one of the coolest directly translated names I've ever heard in my entire life. Please hit me with it. So it means the mysterious slash dark lady of the nine heavens. <sighs> I, know, I want to know right? everything. I like, it, I'm just thinking of like what that invokes for me. And it's just like riding nine horses into battle with like storm clouds coming down and stuff oh, like yeah. that. Oh, man. Yeah, like, just basically Thor Ragnarok. The entire of Thor <laughs> Ragnarok. Yeah, like a, a nice sort of scarily goth-dressed lady coming down from the skies with, like, nine hellhounds behind her. Yeah, 100%. I guess it says something about us that we both picture uh, dark, scary stuff as heaven. Yeah, <laughs> checks out. I like it. Um, so she was specifically known as Shuani prior to around 850 CE. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was just the dark or mysterious lady, um, which God, I just, I wish I could rock a title like that. That is such a cool title. I know. I would give up Night Hag to be the dark and mysterious lady because then I, it, you're relevant at all times a day. I realize right now that this is what I want my wrestling, uh, like title to be. So oh, like most sure. wrestlers, Amanda, 
come out and they'd be like, oh, that's Asuka. But they also get these nicknames from the commentators, like right. the Empress of Tomorrow, which is a real wrestler. <laughs> is she like futuristic? No, she's just like fucking gorgeous. Okay, she's great. Right. I love her. Um, and now, Amanda, just off the top of your head, I want to know what your uh, wrestling gimmick would be. My wrestling gimmick? Yes. Um, I think I would be like a like a professorial or librarian type okay that would then like rip off whatever outer clothes i have uh-huh. and be like a taskmaster okay not, not in like a weird porno way mm-hmm. but in a like i don't know i could beat you down in the courtroom or here in the ring like she hulk yeah for sure there's actually a character in the wwe right now that is like a statistician character <laughs> where she like goes out with these people she's like i calculate that you're gonna lose and it's yeah great. i'll i'll be like the operator because my my day job is is operations at a, at a tech company yeah that's really really good i think okay. so i appreciate your wrestling gimmick it's very good i know i know and i could like team up with like a surgeon and i don't know there's there's <laughs> lots of there's lots of uh, ways this could go so rather than describing joshen chuani what she looks like I-, I think i'm going to let a ming dynasty poet named rong nyong tang do it for me all right so this is from his novel which translates to uh water margin on her head she has a nine dragon and flying phoenix top knot And on her body, she wears a red silken gown decorated with golden thread. Blue jade-like strips run down the long gown and a white jade ritual object rises above her colored sleeves. Her face is that of a lotus calyx and her eyebrows fit naturally with her hair. Okay, nice. Very important. Her lips are like cherries and her snow white body appears elegant and relaxed. She appears to be the queen mother who hosts a Saturn peach banquet, but she looks like Changi, who resides in the moon palace. Her gorgeous immortal face cannot be depicted, nor can the image of her majestic body. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot. Wife goals or life goals. That's all I have to say. I mean, both. Let's be real here. Yeah. So uh, her first story comes from a Taoist master known as Do Guanting, and it was written somewhere between 850 and 933 CE. Mm Um, in the story, Zhou Shen Chuani is the teacher of Huang Di, who is a deity also known as the Yellow Emperor, who was one of the legendary sovereigns and cultural heroes of China. Hmm. He was said to be based off a real person who probably ruled somewhere between 2697 and 2589 BCE. Jesus, that's a long time ago. Yeah, it's a real long time ago. Man, we can't. We come from such a new country i know it's so weird a very old land that was completely you know steamrolled and ruined Mm -hmm. by colonialization but yeah wow but like as a country itself as we understand it now very very young very different that's over five thousand years ago right right about over four almost five oh yeah yeah jeez wow Uh, So Yellow Emperor, he is one of those cultural heroes that is said to be the ancestor of all the Chinese people, uh, which we've seen instances of in the past before. We saw it in Korea. We've seen it in Japan, Mm -hmm. all that kind of instances. So Joshen Chuani was said to have learned all that she knew from Shi Wang Miu, uh, who is said to be the queen mother of the West. She was the dispenser of prosperity, longevity, and eternal bliss, and was said to be the person who opened up the Silk Road trade. I mean, no big deal. I mean, kind of a big deal. <laughs> Changing <laughs> for sure. the scope of the world. Just, you know, creating a vast trade network that influences the world to this day. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. Good job. And like allows us to have archaeology in a lot of ways because mm-hmm. finding goods from that like originated from other countries and are only able to be traded via the Silk Road mm-hmm. are some of the ways in which we can date countries where like you know, or artifacts or, or whatever. It's, oh, it's so cool. I mean, it makes sense that she's the uh, goddess of prosperity then, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> By the way, archaeologists, anthropologists, uh, other other people who dig for a living, I super want to hear your stories. <laughs> please, please come to us if you dig for a living. I mean, you could like dig stuff for a living and be yeah. like a cultural commentator. Yeah, please. I appreciate it. We can dig creepy cool things for a living. <laughs> I like that. Then there was Chiu who was a tribal leader and who was fighting Huang Di at the time. Uh, nowadays, he's been deified as the god of war and was considered one of the three legendary founding fathers of China. Wow. Um, so all of this being background story to, uh, so like we know who the players are in the mm-hmm. story in which uh, Zhou Shen is introduced. Right. So here's the direct story, and then we'll break down the specifics after I read this, okay? okay. The Yellow Emperor came into power. 
Chu and his brothers, a total of 80 people, all had the bodies of beasts and spoke like human beings. They had bronze heads and iron foreheads. They ate sand and rocks, built military weapons, and intimidated the world. They killed at will and without principle, showing no mercy. The Yellow Emperor governed the state, and he looked at the sky and sighed. Heaven dispatched the mysterious woman down to Earth to deliver military messages and sacred talismans to the Yellow Emperor, enabling him to subjugate Xu. The returning statesman, the Yellow Emperor, therefore used them to suppress the enemy and seized control of the Eight Directions. What are the Eight Directions? I think it's just like the span of, of, of the, world. the world. Yeah, Wow. Like, like the directions. Ooh. You know, north, south, oh, east, like west, Cardinal. and then oh, in between. Okay, okay. <laughs> I was Those like, things. I don't know. Fear, success, yes. despair. I like like, like the eight directions of fate is sort of how I was thinking. I mean, wow. I dig that too. That's that a cool That is like the foundation myth of foundation mm -hmm. myths. Before this battle between Hongdi and Chiu, Zhoshan Chuani appeared to Hongdi. Chiu had created a thick mist on the battlefield, which was so impenetrable that it obscured both day and night. Whoa. So Huang Di is trapped in this mist for days, unable to find his way out, unable to tell if it's day or night or like even, you know, send his troops in any direction, really. Yeah, that like completely strips away all the things you mentioned, like direction, the passage of time, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, it really fucks you up. So finally, Zhou Shen Shuini is sent to help him. She rides into the mist on a cinnabar phoenix, which is kind of similar to like a flying peacock with long tails, uh, but like on fire. Not gonna lie, I really thought you said Cinnabon. Uh, no, Cinnabar, <laughs> like the Pokemon <laughs> Island where the oh, fire true. type is. Whoa, yeah. that's a cultural relevance that I can get behind. But Cinnabon also would be adorable. Um, like Kiki's delivery service, but like flying on a Cinnabon. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. She I'm bakes, hungry. She bakes the Cinnabon on the tail <laughs> of the Phoenix. Yeah. It's very good. Ooh, or like, or like, what if the what if the Phoenix just like brulees? stuff wherever she oh, goes man just like lay out you a bunch a of creme sugary brulees. trail oh i love it so much <laughs> listen most foods would be improved by broiling that's 100 percent true come on i can't think of something that i mean hot foods yeah. i mean yeah i mean like i still can't think of anything that wouldn't be toast improved. eggs yep stir fry maybe cereal not but like that's a cold food that is a cold food hmm. and also like oatmeal for sure that oh would yeah be cool like some creme brulee oatmeal get at me Ooh, now I want that. Julia just looked off into the distance like she'd seen God. See, someone on Twitter <laughs> commented that every time we do this, I'm it's hungry. It's true. And now I'm hungry again. Thank you for that. Okay. Well, in uh, roughly 25 minutes, we can get you some snacks. Okay, sweet. Um, so flies in on this phoenix. Uh, she's using phosphors and clouds as reins in order to ride the bird, which Whoa. is just beautiful. I love it so much. It's such a cool image. So she's also wearing this amazing outfit that's made of kingfisher feathers, which have you seen a kingfisher before? I actually have. They're like they're these epic. teal, like gorgeous looking birds. I love them. They're one of my favorite birds. I have a lot of favorite birds. <laughs> <laughs> a side note. Um, and so she's also wearing these nine different colors in order to represent the nine heavens. Wow. So Huang Di greets her and welcomes her command, to which Zhou Shen Shuani tells him, I base myself on the teachings of the Grand Supreme. If you have any doubts, you may question me. Wow. Which I, ah, so good. I love that because normally, you know, a ruler, much less like a deity or a messenger of a deity would be like, don't question me. This is how it is. Like, prove your faith. Mm -hmm. But she's saying, like, hey, listen, I'm here. Ask me your questions. Like, yeah. we're ready. And, like, I also really like it because it makes her seem like she's this mouthpiece for something bigger, but also that she's channeling a force that Huang Di can't understand, but she can interpret for him. Exactly. She is, like, really, like, a holy body, you know, that can take in stuff that's raw, you know, like, more raw and yeah. bigger than a human being can understand, but through that, like, that pass-through filter make it something that humans can grow up. Absolutely. Oh, man. I like that. Oh, okay. Sorry. I just got all excited. And wait, is the Grand Supreme... It's Grand Supreme, right? Yeah. Is that like monotheistic god or is it more of like a fate universe force type thing? It, it's a god, but it's not monotheistic because she is also a deity. I but see. it's kind of like the hierarchy of the deities where Zeus or Odin or something like that. Yeah. It would okay. be that situation. Cool. 
Cool. Uh, so Huang Di responds to her, Chu is cruelly crossing us. His poison is harming all of the black-haired people. The four seas are sobbing. No one can protect his own nature or life. I want the art of winning a myriad of victories in a myriad of battles. Can I cut the harm facing my people? Which just like... I want to break that down just a little bit, especially that last sentence, yeah. because he asks not how he can defeat Chu, but instead how he can help his people. And honestly, I think that's kind of what I find to be like the true ideal of a leader. Yes. And I think that's really a very defining moment for Huang Di in this story. Yeah, 100%. I thought the exact same thing when you read it, which is a hero would ask what the like quickest path to glory is. Mm -hmm. And this ruler is saying listen, I know that I can't get everything I want, but like I, what I need to know is how I can, you know, minimize or stop this harm. So please help. Yeah. Like how best do I help my people? Not just how do I get glory and defeat the enemy? Yeah. Also way more of history should be told in poetry. This is beautiful. I know. I love it. It's great. So when asked this question, Zhou Shen Shuini responds by bestowing him objects and artifacts that will allow him to defeat you and ascend into heaven as a deity. Hell yeah. Uh, they're not really specific about what the artifacts are, at least not the source that I was reading, but it's just like they're supposed to be these really beautiful, it's like items of power, basically. I, I love like uh, bestowing you with your items of power scenes in movies and books and, and comic books and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't know. I, I love it when like a, a person, it's like, it's like a meat cute, but it's a person and their weapons. Yes, basically. <laughs> um, and I just want to finish out the story by uh, mentioning that in the telling of the story, Duan Guangting specifies without Zhou Shen Chuini's help, Huang Di would never have achieved this. He would have never defeated Chiu in battle. He would have never ascended as a god. It's very, it's very like, and because of her help, he was able to do all these things. He would oh, not yeah. have been able to do that without the help of the goddess. Cool. Which I am a fan of. Give credit where credit is due, especially to women. I don't know why Ding. that was a song, but <laughs> there we go. I will give you a musical stinger. Ba -da -ba -ba. Thank you. That's true friendship right there. Ding. So, Amanda, because yes. of the story that I told you about uh, Huang Di and Zhou Shen Chuani. How could I forget? Uh, she is associated with warfare. Sure obviously. Uh, but that's not her only association. Okay. Because she's amazing. <laughs> um, so she's also associated with magic. Ooh. So several Taoist texts give the goddess magical capabilities, such as the ability to turn invisible. Okay. Uh, I mean, like the shrouded in cloud. Yeah. Right? Like yeah, how, yeah. how much more in tune with nature and light and obfuscation could you get? I know. Exactly. Oh, God. She's so cool. She's also been known to be able to mobilize the stars, using them to protect China. And Dang. I'm not I'm not entirely clear from the text I was looking at, like how that is supposed to be a thing. I assumed like fate and alignment and stuff like that that makes sense i kind of had a turning the stars into soldiers to help protect the world kind of situation Whoa. like that was my imagery in the head i don't know if that's accurate yeah but that's kind of the cool thing that i had in my brain stuff. or I, I guess with that example of um kind of disorientation mm -hmm. on the battlefield that we learned about earlier you could also like use the constellations in the heavens to guide people. Oh yeah, somewhere navigation. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I like that. Oh, cool. Or even okay. like sending constellations or sending messengers. You know, omens, um, examples of like, oh hey, I'm seeing like this constellation in the sky that represents whatever. So I should you know be cautious, or I should be bold, or I should like go by sea or whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I like that a lot. Oh man, now I just want I want to like see the movie version of that. I know, you know but I the mean? good movie version. Oh, yeah, of course. Not the shitty movie version. Yeah. I've been watching a lot of Mystery Science Theater 3000 lately. <laughs> and, oh, man, there's a lot of bad movies out there. Do you know what I've been watching recently? Tell me. Animal Planet's The Zoo. Yes, you did. You texted me about this. I did. I am obsessed. It's a reality show about the Bronx Zoo. I'm obsessed. I love Mert the Goose. And everything about it is beautiful. It's about just, like, the zookeepers and just, like fellow New Yorkers in the Bronx just loving animals and taking care of them and, and just like being so conservation and like wildlife, you know, health minded. I, I always disliked going to zoos as a kid because I felt so badly for the animals, but kind of modern, you know, zookeeping, it's all about like preserving species and rehabilitation, stuff like that. Right. Um, so it's just, it's feel good. It's adorable. It's so well edited. Oh, it's so good. Can we take a trip <gasps> to the Bronx Zoo, please? Yes, we can. Because I've been trying to drag Jake yes. for like 
two years at this point and i want to go real bad yes before like the schools let out and shit you know what i mean i absolutely do we should go very soon double date yes someone among us can instagram stories it yes oh my god please okay good we're gonna go to the zoo now back to the story okay (laughs) her invisibility ability invisibility ability that's a thing that i just said yeah uh is exercised through her acolytes uh known as the six ding jade maidens huh so the jade maidens each have a different ability that includes invisibility okay like like one per yes so for instance one can hide her physical body another can conceal her destiny one's fortune spirit soul etc wow it's really cool so like there's physical physical invisibility but then you know like someone could be like i I want to know what your future is be like ha ha ha, you don't know (laughs) i want to tell you that's amazing though like especially when your powers involve the realm of like time fortune predestination all this kind of stuff Mm -hmm. you know you need like protection and abilities in those you know arenas too Mm -hmm. especially like as a goddess or as just like non-mortal yeah deities you'd be like "Eh, i'm not gonna tell you my future or fortune or you cannot see my spirit i just like that yeah or or i mean imagine like in a a movie or a book you'll have like an oracle you know Mm -hmm. who kind of like looks at stuff to come and Mm -hmm. says oh well beware this person or you're gonna be fine Mm -hmm. but like imagine being able to cloak yourself from such imagining like yeah. you you are like the ultimate kind of stealth bomber coming in Hell to yeah. change fate in a way that no one can see which leads into my next point Ooh. uh the fact that joshen shuani originally learned her invisibility as a military strategy where it was used to defeat enemies and protect the state yeah there you go boom so worship for her invisibility is also done in the hope that concealing their bodies will allow them to expel evil and return to righteousness wow that's shit. some like hierarchy of needs shit i like that a you lot. know where you you transcend the physical and and can then do the rest. you can purge your body of evil or you know what know. have you wouldn't it be nice to leave this flesh sack behind i mean yeah or or like selectively be able to be in it oh yeah yeah, yeah. astral projection kind yes, of style precisely i could get down with some astral projection my god so could i oh, we could yeah. be in the bronx zoo right now we could let's just <laughs> Let's just lay back and ask for projector. They have a herd of gazelle, Julia. A herd of gazelle. They have like snow leopards, which are my favorites. (gasps) So pretty. They have little baby tiny monkey friends. Oh, God. I'm just getting excited about the zoo now. We need to focus up. Okay. Aside from war and magic, she's also associated with sex and sexuality. Huh. I was going to say, we haven't really touched on that so far. Yeah. A book from the Han Dynasty that bears her name in the translation to English, The Mysterious Woman Classic, mm-hmm. which sounds like a horse race a little bit. Sounds like a cocktail. Oh, man. Also that, sounds like a horse race. And that's going to be our cocktail for this episode. I yes. will come up for it later. I feel like Lavender Earl Grey vibes, but you do what no, you will. No, no, I'm, I'm with you there. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Hold on. That with like a little bit of like floral gin. Oh, yeah. And then maybe like a dash of sake or something like that. Like mm. really like pop. Okay. Yeah, the like the like, with like a little like hint note. of vanilla there. Ooh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Okay. Um. So this book, the Mysterious Woman Classic, is specifically a handbook in which, uh, and it's in the form of a dialogue yes about sex cool yeah i mean yeah it makes sense to me uh so they were actually a pretty popular book most upper class households in the han dynasty had this book in their libraries oh my goodness um a seventh century poet uh leo Zhongshan, uh wrote a book that contains descriptions of the sexual arts that he said were transmitted to him by joshan chuani herself I mean, I respect it. All right. Like, I'm not going to tell you you're wrong, buddy, but... <laughs> Listen, if that's where you learned your sexual arts from, I'm not. I'm going to buy that book. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, a, it's a good marketing uh, strategy. I, yeah, you're not wrong. I'm just thinking about how good, like, a book by Aphrodite about sex would be. Okay, which god would you want to teach you about sex? Obviously, not Zeus. That's no, not a question. No. <laughs> I'm thinking, like, maybe Loki... Because it's like, you're having sex. Boom, I'm a snake. <laughs> Yo, I'm a horse now. Yeah. A lady horse. You're a horse. What? <laughs> no, that'd be scary. No, that that would not be good. Maybe be um, maybe Urzuli Danter. Oh, fuck yeah. That's yeah, it. Yeah, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Any of the Urzulis, really. Seriously. They're all pretty dope. Danter would be like, uh, this man fucked you over, so we're going to kill him? And you'd be like, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Really I'm just saying. Like, oh, well, he's dead already. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying sex with a vengeance. That's a book title. Yes, it is. 
write it right now. Anyway, <laughs> uh, and this will tie into the last aspect we'll be discussing. The sexual practices that were associated with Joshan Chuni were compared to alchemy and practices commonly used for prolonging life. Hmm. She even tells Huang Di in the in certain texts that her sexual practices are like quote the intermingling of water and fire. It can kill or bring new life depending on whether or not one uses the correct methods. Which God, isn't that the fucking truth? Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. She's just dropping straight fire on us that right wrong. now. Damn. I want that like in my tombstone. Yeah, that's and, my and tombstone I mean, quote. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not I'm not calling mine yet I think okay. I have quite some time yeah, to make yeah, some yeah. interesting puns about death but uh, you know <laughs> <laughs> but physical you know effects aside emotionally it's also true like sex can deepen a bond or it can make you feel really alienated like yeah. that that any kind of intimacy you know has that effect of either you know yes this risk was worth it and you know it either solidifies you know or proves something i thought or you know maybe it reveals to you that you you know think differently or, or weren't connected like you thought you were or mm-hmm. you know something different is important to you yeah so um as much as i giggled uh, the, the first time around there is some truth there as no, well it, there's definitely some truth there oh man that just makes me sad because i was thinking about the like incel discussion that's been going on mm-hmm. on like twitter and in the news lately and stuff yeah. like that and like Sex is a very defining thing for a lot of relationships, especially now that we're very open about it. Mm-hmm. But I also don't think that anyone has the right to sex. And you, yeah, I mean, you do have the right to sex with yourself. Yes, but not with other people. Other it's people like are you not have the objects. right to pursue happiness. You don't have the right to be happy. You have the right to like pursue sex, but not mm-hmm. the right to have it. Right, exactly. Which I believe that Josh and Chuni would agree with us. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, there's this really interesting aspect that is associated with Josh and Chuni, and it's basically this idea that the human body is a microcosm of the universe. And because of this, the gods are present within the human body. My eyes are very wide. I know, this is very cool. Yeah. This is like my favorite philosophical thing that I've ever read about anything in our research for Whoa. these episodes. It's very cool. Because the gods are present within the human body, this term is physiological microcosmology. <gasps> yeah. I'm just going to let that sit there. Wow. Physiological microcosmology. I need to know everything, please. I got you. So in this belief, Joshan Chuani is located in the central median of the body, and she is associated with the circulation of breath, which is said to nourish the spirit and provide longevity. Yes. Also not wrong. I mean, like, completely, completely accurate. Good job. So for instance, one is instructed to send their breath down, meaning take deep breaths, so that it might enter the goddess's mouth inside them. Whoa. Nourishing the goddess would mean elongating one's lifespan or even achieving immortality. I mean, that's completely right. Like, think about the kinds of things that we do when we do deep breathing. It's about calming and centering and focusing and, like, drawing up a different strength within you, feeling Mm. renewed. Completely accurate. Oh, God. It's, like, it's so freaking cool. Um, So, for instance, a text from the 5th century states... Her pearl of great brilliance shines to illuminate the inside of the adept's whole body so that he can extend his years and not die. Yeah, man. Uh, Another text says that the mysterious woman is the mother of the way of the void and nothingness. And the way to call her is uh, this, and I quote, close your eyes and meditate on a white breath between your shoulders. In its center is a white tortoise. On the top of that tortoise is the mysterious woman. Wow. Oh, God, I just love meditation so much. I know. And I bet there are a lot of modern practices that relate to or could be kind of um, related to what we're talking about now. So listeners, you know, that do breath work or, or meditation, mm-hmm. I'd love to hear some of your practices or visualizations. Ever since I saw Fight Club when I was a little kid and mm-hmm. the sort of like, you know, go go into your subconscious and like visualize your penguin. Exactly. That just really struck a chord with me. I don't know why. It's so fascinating. Like, this is the kind of stuff that human beings got pretty right pretty early that, you know, deep breathing, focus, um, it, it calms, it, you know, makes you feel more alive. Yeah. Uh, you know who has some very good meditation practices on their podcast? 
Who? Our, our good friend Zach Valenti yeah. on his uh, focused uh, focus AF podcast. He does a like usually five to ten minute segment at the end called Calm AF where he leads you through a guided meditation. And it's very nice and very cool. And his I voice use is it a very lot. calming. He does have a very calming voice. When he's not yelling about space problems. That's true. 100% true. She is also associated with alchemy, said to prepare elixirs for other deities and specifically with a process called Niandan or inner alchemy. Hmm. which um, I know how much you love alchemy, Amanda. I sure do. So I'm going to go a little bit into it. Uh, So basically, it's this physical, mental, and spiritual practice in Taoist tradition that is used to prolong life and create an immortal spiritual body that would survive after death. What is the practice? I don't know, like, really the specifics, but the basics of it are uh, the human body becomes a cauldron in which uh, essence, breath, and spirit are cultivated in order to improve physical, mental, and emotional health, and eventually one becomes an immortal. Wow. That also tracks with, like, for me personally, thinking about food as fuel for your body Mm -hmm. and not, like, what I can or can't eat or what's good or bad, but you know, what will fuel my body right now and make it be it's like, you know, most functional and holistic and good feeling sure. um, is, is for me a, a really like well-adjusted and productive way to think about a thing that I have a complex relationship with. Yeah. Um, and that is so true that like your, I also often kind of talk and think of myself as like an ecosystem. Mm-hmm. Like my ecosystem is, you know, carefully calibrated and likes a certain temperature and a certain humidity, and like needs more sleep sometimes and more water and more rest and more social time. Um, and kind of when all these things are in balance, then I'm sort of like primed and ready to go. Um, but the, the sort of like leveling up of that mindset is mm-hmm. like, oh, no, 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 you could like, you know, shuffle off this mortal coil and become completely immortal if it all goes correctly well i mean your your internal ecosystem is very similar to the physiological microcosmology yes which i just like saying those words together i know i feel like very cool. anytime someone will actually me at a bar about finance i'll just be like mm, physiological cosmology mm-hmm. get at me yeah but oh, i mean so true like i mean a we're all star stuff right like the mm-hmm. fact that all atoms in a body have been atoms of other things yes. and we're born in stars like it's amazing i don't I know it. anything else about the world so it's everything's fine cool. um and also as a i don't know like our our experience of the universe is necessarily um mediated and based obviously in our bodies and like we are this the thing around which everything else orbits mm-hmm. hopefully not because that's a very self-centered way to look at the universe mm-hmm. but like literally you know that is true and the fact that you can kind of draw that metaphor between like you know i am the nucleus of like my experience of the universe Mm -hmm. but also like that is true within me and i am one like you know fraction of a molecule of the rest of the cosmos Mm -hmm. i don't know it's me that puts a lot of things in perspective in in a really good way right and i i think it's kind of that in my head, it's kind of this telescoping thing. Yeah. Like, is there a small you also existing within your physiological microcosm that feels the same way and also has their own physiological microcosm and so on and so forth? I mean, there sort of is because, yeah. like, I can think about my brain. So, therefore, what what am I? Like, what is the I that is able to think about my own brain? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, there, there has to be something in there. We're getting very uh, philosophy 101 here, but I'm into it. I know. I know. Like, I, I don't know. When I first read about these things... I was just like, oh, man, I figured it out. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Someone, you know, it, it's just it, it honestly blew my mind. Yeah. Um, and to be able to revisit it and know that human beings have been thinking about these kinds of things for, you know, one and three and five thousand years mm-hmm. um, is like the the best I don't know, kind of revelation for me. But I also like this idea of like the internal alchemy. Like I am I am tending to my physical body, but I'm also tending to like my emotional and mental health as well Yes. in order to, you know, like just take care of myself and prolong my life. And like, that's such a genuinely like, like concept that we still struggle with today. And the fact that they're talking about it back then is kind of insane to me, but I love it. You know what I mean? It absolutely is. And in the way that kind of a, a modern version of that is like the self-care discourse. Oh, yeah. Where sure. like, okay, yes, there are ways in which self-care is kind of like commercialized and is economically privileged mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, but I, I really can jive with the ethos behind it, which is that, you know, the the stuff you surround yourself with and the way you treat yourself um, is as or more important than you know anything else you can do in the world yeah. that surrounding yourself um whether it's like like for me having my house be like 
uh, reflective of my personality and neat and um, calming and like situated to my atmosphere makes everything else possible in my life. Or maybe for others, it's social time or it's alone time or it's the music or books or um, other, you know, the foods that they eat Mm -hmm. um, or stuff that makes them feel really well situated. And like that is the thing you need to take care of before you can like level up into other other stuff exactly and just like understanding hey we exist more than just as physical beings we we have to take care of those other things or else we're not going to live the most fulfilled life that we can yeah oh man and josh and chuani does a great job in just embodying all of that also like what fashion man oh what so good what powerful colors oh man i want a top knot of dragons almost as good as anana's like, yeah yeah look i i would say they are uh, on the runway together just like posing oh yeah i know we did our our series of um water spirit pins mm-hmm. but i feel like there could be a pin set of like high femme uh Ooh. goddesses oh i love it already <laughs> someone someone pitches those images because i want to see what those would look like i love it i love it oh man i want to just kind of leave this one off and saying like once again, we found a goddess that I want to just embody in my everyday life. Yeah. 100%. I want to have that sort of fearless military knowledge, the like magic and like mysteriousness to myself. And yeah. then also just the emotional understanding like, hey, I'm more than just a physical being. I need to take care of the rest of myself. I need to take care of the universe that exists within myself. And therefore taking care of the universe, mm-hmm. like writing, writing your own wrongs and taking care of yourself is an act of goodness and of, you know, positive impact on the universe at large. Mm-hmm. Even though the idea of uh, infinite me's all the way down within me, that our universe is within my universe, within my universe, I find to be kind of creepy and also kind of cool spirits was created by amanda mclaughlin julia shafini and eric schneider with music by kevin mcleod and visual design by allison wakeman keep up with all things creepy and cool by following us on twitter tumblr facebook and instagram at spirits podcast we also have all our episodes collaborations and guest appearances plus merch on our website spiritspodcast.com come on over to our patreon page patreon.com slash spirits podcast for all kinds of behind the scenes stuff Throw us as little as $1 and get access to audio extras, recipe cards, director's commentaries, and patron-only live streams. And hey, if you like the show, please share us with your friends. That is the best way to help us keep on growing. Thank you so much for listening. Till next time.